Hello, and welcome to SuperCloud 6 and the continuing discussion around AI innovation. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with theCUBE Research. Today, I'm joined by Enrique Lizasso, CEO of Multiverse Computing, a company that is really at the forefront of com quantum computing and AI, that intersection that really is at the, that far edge, but coming to a place and computing near you soon. Welcome, Enrique. Oh, thank you very much, Rob, for inviting me to be here. So I, I, I'm excited because we covered you on Silicon Angle, and you guys just got your uh, A round, which was oversubscribed. It was 27 million in U.S. dollars, 25 in euros. Uh, how, that's really interesting to us because I'm I'm glad to have somebody on from across the pond uh, in Europe. Because again, you guys are really seeing it from a different perspective than maybe we are over here. Why don't you kind of give us a view on how things are going in Europe with quantum and with AI and what does it really look like? Okay, Rob, the situation here is, uh, let's say, Europe has a feeling in that side that uh, we are losing again and again all the uh, tech uh, evolution uh, regarding, for example, the United States and also China, and that we should just be uh, working harder and bolder in some particular fields, particularly on quantum, but also on AI. And well, uh, it's a very good time for us, uh, that given that we are working in this particular intersection. So yes, uh, we are just working hard. We have talent. Now we are just infusing, putting money inside the companies like us, like mine, which is multiverse computing. Uh, and now we are trying to deliver some of the solutions that we have in, uh, or not only in Europe, but also in the United States. I have to say that we are on the other side of the uh, of the pond. I mean, we have an office, which is the second largest one in Toronto, in Canada, but the United States uh, deserves a, a different approach on its own, for sure. Yeah, no, Toronto is a good place. And for people who don't know, they actually have an innovation zone in Canada in Toronto where they're they're looking for companies like yours that are doing really innovative things. And I, I think, you know, multiverse computing is really, you know, again, at the forefront of that intersection between quantum techniques and AI, two very important topics. You know, let what drives the company to really invest in those two topics in particular? How yeah. did this come about? We, we discovered that with uh, particularly with a customer from us. Uh, we can tell uh, the name now because it's public, it's Bosch. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the super powerful automotive and some other uh, company. The, the idea, the real idea was just, okay, we have AI systems that are expensive to train. Uh, they are large uh, and so on. And could we just prepare something that is smaller, not only, but not only smaller because you have to fit the system somewhere, but also uh, to consume less energy and so on. Uh, and we analyze the problem and say, yes, uh, this is a particular problem that fits into the quantum computing and also in what is called quantum inspired uh, computing, which is basically uh, system, uh, techniques that came from quantum computing, but you can apply in regular uh, uh, computers, in the classical computers that we are using right now. In particular, a family of techniques which are called tensor networks. Nothing to do with tensor flow. I mean, this is different. This uh, tensor network is a super powerful uh, W's, military and civil, uh, uh, mathematical beast. And then at some point, we were not so clever. Uh, but at some point, uh, uh, somebody inside the company suggested, okay, we have done that in manufacturing line with some uh, very big names and so on. Can we apply that to LLMs? And, and we say, okay, let's try. Let's try to compress a model. And, and compress it, we did. I mean, uh, uh, we took a, a, a Yamados, okay, 85% of compression in the first trial. Uh, very few uh, decrease in the accuracy and slashing by half the retraining time and also slashing by half the, 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 the inference time and say, oh, this is something that uh, we should focus on and happen that this is quantum on one side, this is on the other side, uh, also AI. And then we notice that uh, some people from civil insights and so on, they put us in the intersection and say, okay, maybe this is our place in the world to be. Um, well, that's a, that's a, a real thing. Yeah. 
and that's how you got there. And I, I think that uh, one of the things, and I, because let's unpack that a little bit. You've really uh, hit on a lot of things. Uh, first, it's the power and sustainability of AI, which yeah. I, I think has not really been a big topic here in the U.S. But every time I go to Europe or I go to anywhere else in the world, they're always, you know, hey, we can't get. 100,000 GPUs yeah. and what is the, you know, we're building, and I know because there's cer certain service providers in Europe that are building into uh, caves and using ambient air up in the Nordics and things of that nature for the data centers with tons of GPUs to kind of lower the carbon footprint of what's being done. But also you hit on the, the size of the models and compression. This yes. really, the cost of LLMs and where they are being trained and fine-tuned is a big topic of conversation even here in the U.S. And we see people saying, hey, we're going, you know, we're going to maybe do training in the cloud, but then we do fine-tuning on premises or in a colo or somewhere where we, it's closer to our data so we can keep privacy. And PII with GDPR is a big, you know, big concern mm -hmm. in Europe as well. How are you seeing the intersections of all of this and it all fitting into, you know, again, like you said, classical computing mm -hmm. and current infrastructure, given that it is quantum and everybody thinks quantum, they think, you know, and I know you were mentioned by IBM in one of their reports, but, mm -hmm. you know, they think of quantum, they think, you know, big companies, very cold temperatures and quantum computing. <laughs> how, does, how does the cost aspect really help your customers? Uh, yes, you are right. I mean, uh, there are some some particular details that are uh, quite uh, relevant. Last, I think that uh, uh, two days ago, uh, was uh, some news in the Financial Times about uh, Ireland using 20% uh, of the electricity production just for data centers. Uh, uh, and the demands from new, uh, for new data centers and also from more performance of the data centers is escalating super fast. But this is because LLM and uh, AI, I mean, this is just rising like a rocket, a real rocket. Okay, so they say, uh, okay, so we have to apply the data centers to use green energy, green sources of energy, electric, electricity. electricity. I mean, eolic, uh, I mean, winds, uh, photovoltaic, and so on. No way. I mean, this is not going to work. I mean, the, the, the AI uh, electricity consumption is escalating so fast that even if you put all the uh, resources of green electricity you have now, you are not going to cope with the demand. Even, even worse, even worse. I mean, you want AI everywhere. I mean, you can see the other day from Volkswagen uh, stating that, okay, they want to put LLMs in, inside the car, which is a natural way to... Uh, to uh, re to have a relationship, let's say, with your car. I mean, right. not just clicking buttons and so on and so on. So uh, this solution, for example, from us, is a proposal what is called, in general speaking, green algorithms, but things from quantum, particularly. So now you can apply on from let's uh, quantum inspired techniques, tensor networks, and that means that you can apply that if the model is small, completely offline, which is uh, super good, you can imagine. If you are talking, if you are Iron Man and talking to Jarvis and you are just skyrocketing and when you arrive there, you try to speak to Jarvis and Jarvis said, okay, I lost my connection. No way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, so you need those models, but you need those models very small and not uh, uh, with not so energy uh, uh, hungry. Right. Nature does the thing differently. Yeah. And, and we, okay. we actually came up with what we call the the power law distribution of Gen AI. And again, you know, you have your classical clouds out on the far, you know, far left, I guess you could say, of the model, and a very steep curve comes down, and then you have the extension out, which we look at as a lot of the use cases, or the vast majority of the use cases may be smaller models, but more numerous, like you were talking about with car, and we mm -hmm. say at the edge and far edge, uh, is where most of the models doing inference will actually live because you want to interact with them in, at that. But you guys are not only involved with Gen AI, you're also involved mm -hmm. with what I, I, I hate to even call it this, but classical AI and ML. <laughs> yes. And so these, tell us about how these 
techniques actually can be applied to that as well. Yes, I mean, we are regularly applying to that. You have a number of places that you cannot apply a quantum computer or a generative quantum computer uh, for some resources. For example, if you go to the manufacturing line, uh, a lot of times it's about something as, uh, let's say, as, 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 as old, if you can use this, this, this word, <laughs> as defect detection. I mean, you have a manufacturing line and you have to detect which are the, 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 the defects on a particular pieces or so on. Okay. Uh, okay, this is a classical AI problem. This is uh, super classical. The point is you have just to deliver a solution that is more accurate and faster. This is consuming a lot of resources as well. So if you can provide those solutions, this is much better. And this is where you, the, the let's say, classical AI solutions come in from, uh, from the, the quantum sphere that uh, we are just particular uh, experts in that also, can just save a lot of money. And this is important because when you go to a customer, a real customer, if you go to a, let's say, the business line, uh, uh, oh boy, those guys are hard. And they are not uh, 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 extremely excited about the uh, technology or the innovative part of the technology. They okay. are just focused on, okay, cheaper, faster, and that's all. Okay, Ab can you provide that? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like you said, you know, defect detection and being able to do things faster as a uh, organization and, you know, trying to get at this or doing uh, money laundering detection inside yes. of a bank and things of that nature, which has been classical AI for quite some time, uh, really mm -hmm. does play out. And I, I think that I hadn't even thought about quantum like techniques being applied there, but that, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. I can just tell you some other examples that are exciting, but you can, uh, as you can, can see, this, those problems and the technology is completely transversal. So, for example, okay, uh, we started in finance. I mean, well, this, is a, my, this is the traditional achieve in, <laughs> in finance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we have some uh, anomaly detection uh, techniques. Okay. Then we apply those anomaly detection uh, on the manufacturing lines. But you want to have something funny? I mean, uh, uh, we were approached by a third level hospital here in Europe. Third level means uh, transplantations, those kind of things, super right. high level uh, medical care. And they told us, okay, boys, we, we have 140 beds in the intensive uh, care unit. Intensive care unit. The doctors, the physicians there, they are not interested in you are going to live alone 100 years or not. They are just interested, okay, in which of the 140 beds that we have there, fully connected, 40 connections, five seconds millisampling, which of those patients are going to give us a problem in the next 30 minutes or an hour, okay, wow. because we have to be prepared. And this is, and we say, okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. This is exactly the, the defect detection algorithm. Okay. So, and you want to, and I thought that I have heard a very nice story, but then, but then after in another field, uh, 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 football, okay, soccer here in, in yeah. Europe, okay, team, uh, uh, they came to us and they say, we have tons of data, tons of data of our players, what they eat, what they, uh, how fast they run, uh, everything with GPS, everything. Uh, and the point is we need to have some clue about which of the players is going to have an injury, okay, in the next uh, match or in the next week. So again, same algorithm, okay, need precision, a quite difficult problem. Okay, and we say, okay, yes, we can provide. We have the algorithms. We have the algorithms coming yeah. from quantum and quantum inspired. And they told me, but we ask, but is this work? And they say, boy, do you know how how much we are paying to a, a, a soccer player? Oh yeah, the football <laughs> this players is much there more make a lot. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 definitely uh, corporate assets. Let's put it that way. Yes. But and and the injuries are definitely on the liability side. So. <laughs> Yes. But, yes, but yes. so I, I think another thing that really you you're focused on is that sometimes, especially with LLMs, and we hear this all the time, is that everybody's afraid of uh, bad information being injected into yes. an LLM, so that there is 
you know, like you said, anomalies, uh, but, you know, we call them hallucinations and other stuff. And if you're using that for, you know, customer success or customer service, you don't want to give the wrong information out to a customer. How are you guys really addressing Mm -hmm. that as well? Yes. Uh, we have not entered particularly in this problem we are going to enter, but we are tackling with, uh, 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 because this is a problem that appears on the inference time, I mean, where the model is hallucinating, uh, but uh, we have a, a super nice uh, update that is going to appear in the next uh, two months, I think, which is the uh, something that we uh, call the lobotomizer. Okay, and say, okay, lobotomizing, <laughs> yes, uh, and this is, well, what's about that? This is making uh, LLM forget something, okay? This is something that not even the nature uh, uh, can can do with us, uh, the, the human beings and so on. But this is important because uh, if you have fit your LLM model with the wrong data, I mean, and wrong means that maybe the, the data is wrong, or maybe you have used some data that is under IP protection, Okay, uh, the only option that you have now is it has to uh, 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 get an, arre- an agreement with some party or being sued and then forced to retrain all the model. And uh, we know that this is super expensive. So right. We thought that, okay, uh, those quantum techniques uh, make a representation of the uh, distribution of the knowledge inside inside an LLM uh, 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 we saw that from a different point of view. I mean, this is tensorization, et cetera, et cetera. But you can just extract, eliminate some parts of information which more precision. You know approximately what you are doing. So this is uh, super important. This is also uh, going to be this lobotomizer.ai is uh, what is going to appear in the next months, as I, I mentioned. So it's not only about compressing and making che- things cheaper and so on, but also to do that. Yeah, no, I, I think that to me makes total sense because it really helps people reduce cost. It actually does have a sustainability aspect to it as well, where you won't have to retrain these models, which training is the vast majority of the cost is in the training. And then you do have costs and the influence mm-hmm. and things like that, but that's distributed out typically. Any, yes. any other things that you can see on the horizon if you're looking out that you think are very interesting in the intersection between quantum and AI? Yes, I think this is super important also. Uh, one thing that I forget to mention is that uh, those techniques, which came from a di- completely different mathematical beasts about uh, how to see the nature and all the things, uh, you can apply that on top of the classical techniques of quantization, okay, uh, planning or so on, that they... Uh, people are using now to compress the model. So, and the effect on compression is additive. I mean, so this is something completely new. And we are just only tapping at the top, okay, of the of the, of the pie, of the bottle. Uh, this is going to be even deeper and deeper and deeper. At the end, at the end of the day, uh, if you use, let's say, 100, 200 millions to train a model, Okay, uh, maybe nature nature is not doing that way. I mean, you are you don't need uh, 100 million to educate a uh, a child. Okay, right. maybe it's not a Nobel Prize, but most of the times you don't need a Nobel Prize to help you driving your Volkswagen. This is the point. So, okay, yeah, I, okay. I want something cheaper, faster, and so on. And those are the techniques that can really deliver the the, the value as today. No, also. I... Yo, go ahead. So sorry. this is going. Sorry, uh, with something important is we are democratizing also the, the the field in the sense that if you need two hundred million or half a billion or two billions to train some model, okay, very few companies can do that. If you make it cheaper, even by half, which is too much, well, oh, boy, you are going to have more comp- more competitors. That's good. Yep, I agree. Well, I want to thank you, Enrique, for coming on. This has been super interesting. And I, I think, again, we'll keep in touch because you guys are doing, you're really out there bridging the gap between the classical and the quantum computing, which I think is going to become even more important as we move towards these in the future. So thank you for coming on board. Thank you very much, Rob. I mean, it has been a real, real pleasure. Same here. 
Stay tuned for more from SuperCloud 6.